Hello everyone, welcome to Isis. Alright, so this is going to be something different from what I normally do. I'm not even sure what the genre of this game actually is because I've never really played one before. Um, I don't know, is it a text adventure? Is it a interactive novel? I'm not even sure what they're called because I've never played it before. But anyway, this is Isis where you play as a space station. In fact, it says right here, you are NSC Isis-4, a fourth generation international solar investigation station, built as an observation station for monitoring Sol. You have a crew of one. So I am a space station, and I have to live with this disgusting human inside of me. It's made by Liz England. I'm not familiar with these types of games, I'm not familiar with her work, but this just caught my eye because it sounded delightfully creepy. One more thing to note before I continue is that the music playing in the background is not part of the game. The game actually, as far as I can tell, has no audio. And I figured I could spruce it up a bit if I had like a creepy sort of spacey and vaguely unsettling background music. And I found it. I have a two hour loop of it playing right now, which I can turn off and on and off and on. So this way, not only are you hearing it, but I'm hearing it too. Because it's not just for you, but it's for me, too. It adds to the mood of it. So yes, the music is not part of the game, but I'm glad I've added it, because it sounds really good. Okay, I think I'm ready to get going. Um, yeah. Okay, let's go. And I was thinking... I imagine this sort of a Let's Play probably would work really well as a podcast... I wouldn't even know how to distribute a podcast or anything like that, but I could actually be pretty cool, because I don't think you really need the visuals to get the effect of this. So anyway, let's step into the shoes of a space station. Except, well, space stations don't have shoes because they're space stations, but you know what I mean. Anyway, let's go. And I'm all nice and close to the microphone for this. Yeah. Let's go. I'm going to try to get into this as much as possible. We'll see how successful that is. Access ship's logs. Computer, report on the current life support system status. You hum alive and check your extremities. Your O2 sensors take a deep breath. Your metal, pockmarked skin hums with radiation shielding. Water pumps through your veins. Waste particles, filtered by fine baleen hairs, are vented from your body. The pilot slouches in his chair behind the navigation console, blowing the steam away from his mug of coffee. The pilot has full faith in your control of the space station. Does he? Full faith? We'll see about that. Oh yeah, and it says up here, day 13. So I can report on oxygen levels in the air supply, report on radiation shielding, or report on water and waste filtration systems. Um, let's start with oxygen levels in the air supply. O2 levels are normal. Oxygen generators are at 60.1% capacity. The pilot leans back in his chair. Looking good, Isis. His coffee mug tips over, spilling onto the console. God damn it! You feel the hot caffeinated liquid sizzle into your circuit boards. Your digital neurons misfire and clash. Day 20. Computer, isn't it lunchtime yet? The pilot sits at a small counter in the mess hall, staring into your monitor. Your food dispenser is closed. The pilot has full faith in your control of the space station. Please clarify your order. The pilot caresses your table with the tips of his fingers while he thinks. Uh, let's go with meat. Hey, got any pork? Okay, I can produce a perfectly cooked pork tenderloin, produce a perfectly cooked pork tenderloin with spices, or produce a raw pork tenderloin. Well, you disgusting piece of shit. You spilled coffee inside of me. So why don't you enjoy a raw pork tenderloin? Your food processor hums loudly and then dings. The dispenser opens to reveal a pork tenderloin covered in an imitation cheese substance. Perfect. The pilot takes a bite. He spits the food out. It's cold! He cuts through the center to discover a block of frozen pork product. The meat slab has a similar consistency to human flesh. Seriously? Isis, you're one malfunctioning AI. He shoves the pork back into your food dispenser. Computer, cook the pork for God's sake. Cook the pork loin to a perfect internal temperature of 180, 178 degrees Fahrenheit, or cook the pork loin against health regulations to an internal temperature of 125 degrees Fahrenheit. 
I hate you, you disgusting human. I'm going to cook it to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Day 20. Your food processor hums loudly and then dings. The dispenser opens to reveal a pork tenderloin that appears to be fully cooked. Your sensors can count the bacteria multiplying and defecating and spreading their poisonous spores within its pink center. You watch the pilot shovel the food into his mouth. Day 22. Computer, what's the diagnosis? The pilot sits in the med bay. His skin is pale and his body smells of sweat and bile. A vomit lines your waste disposal unit. You can feel the chunks of pork slide against your metal sensors. The pilot thinks you might have some malfunction. Okay. I've punished him quite a bit. I'll let up. I can just diagnose the pilot with food poisoning report evidence of an anomalous growth, or report no outstanding health issues, let's, uh, I'll be honest, diagnose the pilot with food poisoning. You tell the pilot he suffered food poisoning. He swears. Isn't it your job to prevent that? He reveals his arm for an, in for an injection. Computer, administer the meds. I can inject medication into pilot with perfect precision, or inject medication into pilot by jabbing him sharply. Okay, I'll play nice. Inject it with perfect precision. Day 22. You inject the medication into the pilot's veins with a 0.01 millimeter accuracy. He rubs the spot for a moment and mutters, thanks. The human leaves his biological stench behind for you to contemplate. Day 41. Computer, play some music. How about some classic rock? The pilot sorts his meager belongings within his sleeping quarters. The pilot thinks you might have some malfunction. Okay, classic rock. So I can play Don't Stop Believin' by Journey. I can play... What? Oblad... What the hell is that? Oblada... What? Something by the Beatles on the speakers. Can you tell I'm not a fan of the Beatles? I have no idea what that song name is. Play Rockstar by Nickelback. <laughs> well, Nickelback is not classic rock. So let's go with Don't Stop Believin' by Journey. Uh, don't stop believing... The pilot smiles. That's what I'm talking about. Good choice, Isis. He makes strange noises from his throat in an attempt to imitate the mating calls of humans. Next entry. Day 42. Computer. Does a set of all sets contain itself? The pilot grins at the monitor from the dining compartment. Nutrient solids fill his plastic plate. Imitation cheese product sticks to the lower left edge of his grin. The pilot thinks you might have some malfunction. I can attempt to solve the paradox of does a set of all sets contain itself, or I can deliberately short circuit a fuse. Alright, I'll play along. Attempt to solve paradox. You attempt to solve the paradox. It bogs down your processes, slows down your neural network, you shut down background processes, you feel slow and dumb. Does not compute. The human laughs at you. Fuck you, human. <sighs> Day 70. Computer, could you play the new video message from my wife? The pilot sits in a large chair he dragged into the command room. He faces the largest monitor on your ship. The pilot thinks you might have some malfunctions. You search your drives for the message that arrived less than an hour ago. I can play the video message from the pilot's wife, or report that the video has been digitally corrupted during transit. Hmm... You did make fun of me when I couldn't solve your paradox, you prick. But, I'll be nice for now. Play the video message from the pilot's wife. You process the ones and zeros and spit them back out onto the monitor. The screen fills up with an image of female human age roughly 32, Caucasian. An analysis of her features places a 82% probability of German descent. She takes over your speakers and uses them for her mouth, your monitor for her eyes. You relinquish control over these systems. The pilot listens. His tear ducts fill with saline solution. I have a surprise for you, says the pilot's wife. I can continue playing the video message or report that the video message has been digitally corrupted. I'll continue playing it. The camera pound, pans down to the female human's abdomen. You estimate a 22 to 24 week gestation period so far. The pilot wipes tears from his face. 
and then uses his hands to smear sweat, bacteria, and salt into your clean chair. He smiles, displaying his plaque-covered teeth to you. Her tone of voice changes. I have bad news, too. Continue playing or corrupt? I'll continue playing. Your father died last week. The pilot cries. His vital signs show elevated signs of distress. You continue to stream the message for several more minutes. End of message. He's quiet for a few minutes. Computer. Save the message to my slash home folder. I can save the message or delete the message. I'll save it. Commencing saving file to slash home directory. Success. You feel the video clog up your digital arteries. You add it to the emotional junk hoarded on your drives by the human in your care. The pilot smiles and lays back in his chair. You observe him. Day 76. Computer, dim the lights. The pilot lounges in the observation deck, looking out into the emptiness of space, away from Seoul. The bright lights inside the room wash out the stars. His hand holds a half-empty glass with 23.1% alcohol content. The pilot thinks you might have some malfunctions. Dim the lights. Well, I can make it... I can set the light luminosity to 0%, 50%, or 99.9%. 50% would be dim, 0 would be dark, and 99.9 .9 is very bright. Okay, well, he hasn't done anything particularly egregious for a while, so I'll play along. Set light luminosity to 50%. Lights set to 50% luminosity. Your feminine voice purrs over the speakers. The pilot leans back in his lounge and sips his drink. You wait for your next command. Day 100. Computer, what's the info on this space debris? Your body falls through space rapidly. You feel ahead with your sensors, detecting a pile of old satellite fragments on a collision course with the station. The pilot stands at the navigation console. You stare at the coffee in his hand. The pilot thinks you might have some malfunctions. Well, I can either issue a warning about the probable collision or report no issues with the satellite debris. The problem is, if I report no, as much as I hate him, if I report no issue, I'm going to get hit too. So, issue warning about probable collision. My projections show that the station will collide with satellite fragments in three days unless we avert our course. Computer, divert course. You buzz with calculations. A diversion course that rotates the station would evade the debris entirely. I can adjust course by rotating the station, or keep current trajectory. Well, I don't hurt myself, so let's adjust course by rotating the station. Averting course. Station rota rotation beginning. Rotation will complete in 23 minutes. The pilot shrugs and dump dumps his coffee into your trash dispenser. Day 101. Computer, are there any more locations that need patching? The pilot floats freely in space, hanging onto the hole by handholds. Large solar panels shade him from the harshness of the sun. A tube leads from his suit to an anchor point near the airlock, bleeding oxygen from your body to feed his. The pilot thinks you might have some malfunctions. I can report the status of the hole, shut off oxygen flow to spacesuit, or retract solar panels. Once again, as much as I hate him, he is repairing me. So I will report the status of the hole. There are no more fractures in the hole that need patching at this time. The pilot nods. Thank you, Isis. He uses the handholds to carefully make his way back to the airlock. Computer, activate airlock doors. The pilot stands inside the airlock. The doors open up into space. The pilot thinks you might have some malfunctions. I can activate the airlock doors or do not activate the airlock doors. I will activate the airlock doors. You close the airlock doors. Decompressing compartment. Your voice hums over the speakers. Oxygen levels normal. The seal... Oh, there's a misspell. The seal to the of... Uh, the seal of the ship hisses as you release it. 
you watch the pilot pull off his helmet and drop it unceremoniously, unceremoniously on your floor. Day 113. Computer, report on the current life support system status. You hum alive and check your extremities. Your O2 sensors take a deep breath. Your metal pockmarked skin hums with radiation shielding. Water pumps through your veins. Waste particles filtered by fine, baleen hairs are vented from your body. The pilot slouches in his chair behind the navigation console, blowing the steam away from his mug of coffee. The pilot thinks you might have some malfunctions. Let's do something different this time, so I can report on the oxygen levels, the radiation shielding, or the water and waste filtration systems. Uh, this time, let's report on water and waste filtration systems. Water and waste filtration systems are at 98.8% efficiency. The pilot leans back in his chair. Looking good, Isis. His coffee mug tips over, spilling onto the console. God damn it! You feel the hot caffeinated liquid sizzle into your circuit boards. Your digital neurons misfire and clash. Again. <sighs> Day 120. Computer, isn't it lunchtime yet? The pilot sits at a small counter in the mess hall, staring into your monitor. Your food dispenser is closed. The pilot thinks you might have some malfunctions. Please clarify your order. The pilot caresses your table with the tips of his fingers while he thinks. Let's go with meat. Hey, got any pork? So we're back to the same options. This time, let's produce a perfectly cooked pork tenderloin, but with spices. Your food processor hums loudly and then dings. The dispenser opens to reveal a pork tenderloin covered in an imitation cheese substance spiced to 445 hundred-thousand Scoville heat units. Perfect. The pilot takes a bite. His face turns red and his hand goes to his throat. He spits the food out, panting and blowing air out of his mouth. You can feel the spicy mixture of meat products and human saliva on your floor. Computer, water for God's sakes, give me some water, Isis. I can provide a glass of water, provide a glass of chlorinated water, or provide a partial glass of water. <laughs> provide a glass of chlorinated water. The food processor hums. The dispenser opens to reveal a 20 ounce plastic container filled with 95.1% water and 4.9% chlorine. The pilot grabs it and pours it over his mouth. Sweat drips from his face onto your table. You would recoil if you could move. He spits it out of his mouth and coughs. What the fuck is this? Bleach? You do not respond. Day 139. Computer, play some music. How about some classic rock? The pilot sorts his meager belongings within his sleeping quarters. The pilot has been looking into your private processes. Alright, you want some classic rock? How about Rockstar by Nickelback? I have no idea how to sing the song, so I won't try, but it's something, hey, hey, I want to be a rock star. The pilot stops. Oh, what the hell, Isis? That's definitely not what I asked for. You wait before silencing the speakers. Day 140. Computer. Does a set of all sets contain itself? The pilot grins at the monitor from the dining compartment. Nutrient solids fill his plastic plate. Imitation cheese product sticks to the lower left edge of his grin. The pilot seems to be avoiding you lately. Let's deliberately short-circuit a fuse, you bastard. You appear to attempt to answer the command. Your monitor hums for several seconds and the lights in the dining compartment dim and flicker. Does not compute, you lie. The pilot laughs. You make the microwave explode loudly in a shower of sparks. The pilot ducks below the table and swears. You sense a surge in his adrenaline. Day 168. Computer, could you play the new video message from my wife? The pilot sits in a large chair he dragged into the command room. He faces the largest monitor on your ship. The pilot is red-eyed and has been having trouble sleeping. He does not respond to your questions anymore. You search your drives for the message that arrived less than an hour ago. Report that the video has been digitally corrupted during transit. The video message cannot be played. What? The pilot's blood pressure increases. The video has digital artifacts that destroy the encoding of the message. I am unable to salvage any part of the video. Commencing deletion. The pilot swears at you and leaves the room, slamming your door hard against the hole. You proceed to delete the perfectly working video message. Day 175. Computer. 
It's just you against me now. The pilot is at his breaking point. His eyes are bloodshot. His body was not has not been washed in several days. His sweaty hands are inside of you, yanking out wires like tubes of intestines. You can feel obscure and distant processes shut down involuntarily. I can talk to the pilot, warn the pilot, or request clarification. Let's warn the pilot. Warning, please cease your repairs or I will be forced to immobilize you. Another process disappears as he pries a circuit board from the console. I am not going to stop. He takes a crowbar and pulls off a large panel. You look at him through your fractured monitor. He is trying to get to your heart. I can begin self-destruct sequence or engage locking mechanism on the command center doors. Let's engage locking mechanism on the command center doors. You engage the locking mechanism on the doors. The pilot doesn't notice. He is too busy. He is too busy tearing you apart from inside. Begin self-destruct sequence. Automatic self-destruct has been enabled. Countdown has commenced. The pilot swears at you. Fine. You want to die? You do my job for me. 14, 13, 12. He kicks the side of your console and attempts to open the door. I can trigger internal fire sensors or open solar shutters. Let's open the solar shutters. Let's give him a tan he'll never forget. Retracting solar shutters. The viewport of the command center lights up as you open the shutters. The sun takes up the entire view. The pilot raises a hand to protect his ocular circuits from the painfully bright light. Whatever you are planning, it's not going to work. Lower radiation shielding to 10.4% capacity. Radiation shield lowering to 80% capacity. 53.2% capacity. No. You wouldn't. The pilot struggles to find something to shield himself from the hot, poisonous glare of the sun and the invisible radiation particles that have already started to decontaminate his body. The pilot sweats heavily. He vomits. Blisters rise on his reddened skin. 25% capacity. He is too weak to hurt you now. You wait. The pilot stops breathing. You extend the solar shields and return radiation shielding to full capacity. Already you have begun to de you have begun the decontamination process to clear the radioactive particles from your body. You stare at the body laying in the command center. You dispose of it in the nearest waste dispenser. The body tumbles through the bowels of the ship before you expel it from your body. It floats through space in the direction of the sun. Central Intelligence Report Regarding NSC Isis 4 Solar Space Station, you survived 175 days before killing your human. A new one will be sent to you in 14 days. End log. <laughs> oh man, that was really really cool. So it, it sounds like you just keep going in a, if you if you don't kill the human, you keep going in a loop. Until you just gradually lose patience. <laughs> that was really cool. I should play more of these games. Yeah. And given that I haven't played any at all, I'm sure there's a lot out there. So if anyone is familiar with these types of games, I don't even know what their genre is called, actually. But if anyone out there is familiar with these types of games, uh, let me know if you have any recommendations. I'm particularly looking for ones like this that are kind of horror-ish, like horror, sci-fi, creepy... That sort of thing. I mean, I'll take anything that's really good, but I'm especially interested in things like this that are have a bit of horror twinge to them and sci-fi and are just generally creepy and dark. So yeah, that was really, really good. I'm sure there's a bunch of other pathways that you can take, but I feel like I've had a nice gameplay experience already and I don't want to go digging around in it too much. Because sometimes if you... Sometimes if you go back in a game and you explore every single possible pathway, sometimes that hurts the experience and kind of allows you to like, you know, see behind the gears turning the logic of the game. So I think the one playthrough should be where I stop because I don't want to ruin the illusion. So, yeah, there you go. And I just want to mention that the music in the background, which is wonderful, and I'm so glad I 
I have that playing because it really added to the creepy mood of it. Um, it is... I forgot the name of it, but it's by Kevin MacLeod, who has a ton of music that anyone can use. It's just... Uh, uh, it's a Creative Commons attribution license, so all you have to do is attribute it to the author, and you're good to go. So royalty-free music that you can use for anything, and it's really high-quality stuff, and... I don't have to mention it, but I want to. To say, check his stuff out if you're interested. Link will be in the description. Um, also be at the end of the video. So I guess right about now. I just want to mention him because he's a really cool dude. Very high-quality music that you can use, and all you have to do is attribute it. Which is awesome. That's that's very, very rare to find. Trust me, I've I've looked before. It's pretty rare. So my hat's off to Kevin McLeod for providing the music. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed my playthrough of Isis. You disgusting human.